Yo, YouTube, what's good? Ravens Flock, what's good? It's your boy Gary, we're just on the fan TV. Back at another video, man. Today, we're gonna talk about one of the most polarizing players in the Ravens fan base, and that is Mr. Adafi Owe himself. First round pick last year. Uh, should we be concerned about what's going on, or should we just give him more time? Uh, we know that the Ravens are kind of lacking the pass rush right now, and we're looking at Adafi Owe to be one of those guys that provides that pass rush. So what I did, I went back, watched the game versus the Patriots, and really focused in on Adafi Owe to see what he was doing, good, bad, and indifferent. And I just kind of want to share my thoughts with you guys about what I saw. Now, before we get into that, if you like the content in this video, go ahead, uh, smash that like button, like the content this channel. Go ahead, hit subscribe, man. A lot of guys, a lot of y'all have been subscribing late, and I really greatly appreciate that. Uh, also, definitely uh, hit up the comment section, man. You know, I reply to all comments. I love to have a conversation with you guys. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're all football fans, whether you're Ravens fans or not. So, love having that discussion in the comments. So, just keep doing that, and, uh, you know, we'll talk about this video, you know, when it drops, obviously. All right, so uh, O-line, D-line matchups are very, very hard to just see in real time during the game, you know, unless somebody's giving up a sack, unless somebody's getting a sack, you know. So I wanted to come back and watch Odafi always film and just kind of really zero in and focus on him and see what he's doing out there, see if it's just uh, maybe the stats aren't showing up, but, you know, he's playing well, things of that nature, right? So I went back, watched the Patriots game again, and just kind of just, like I said, zeroed in on him because the first-round pick from last year, Rashad Bateman, you know, we're seeing the results from him. We want to see those same kind of results from the other first round pick in Adafi Owe. We want to see those same kind of results. You know, we want to see him show up and be a big time player that we think he can be. All right. So let's start from the top, right? Um, he played 86% of the snaps on defense. So good. He's out there a lot. His primary matchup was against uh, number 77 on the Patriots. This is Trent Brown. Now, I'm going to tell you about Trent Brown real quick. There are a lot of huge individuals in the NFL. Uh, Trent Brown is among the biggest. Okay, we're talking about 6'8", 380 pounds, long arms, good athlete. This is a tough matchup for Adafi Owe, okay? Uh, so I just want to put that out there, that who he's going against primarily. Now, he did match up a little bit against Isaiah Wynn, number 76, and he fared a little bit better against Isaiah Wynn, but his primary person he was going against was left tackle, uh, Trent Brown, okay? Now, uh, lots of one-on-one -on -one matchups. He was tipped maybe two or three times by a tight end. Nothing major. He really didn't get double teamed, so it was a lot of mano a mano. Right? They, the Patriots were comfortable with Trent Brown going against Adafi Owe. Um, a lot of I, I I I saw people mention earlier, not earlier, but past videos that you know he might have been held during the game. During the Patriots game, I think he was held maybe legitimately two, maybe three times. One of them was definitely called. They missed one on a crucial fourth down. Uh, that would have backed the Patriots up there if they would have called it, but they didn't. So, you can call hold on every play on offensive alignment. They're just not going to do that, all right? So, you know, you got to get a hold when, you know, you're outside a guy's body frame. He's turning. You're still tucking him the other way. Holds like that, I'm really only seeing maybe two, three of those kind of holds, okay? And drop back into coverage. He dropped back into coverage three times. One time, he did chase a tight end down the seam and then kind of pass him off to the safety. But other than that, he was just kind of dropping up into the flat. He doesn't seem to enjoy dropping too much. He just kind of drops out there. He's not really looking for any work, you know. doesn't really seem to be a, a comfort of his, okay? Um, so, we're gonna, I'm going to do positives and negatives from what I saw from Adafi Owe. So, let's just get into it, all right? So, positives. He had a couple nice upfield rushes on Trent Brown. Um, really... Using his speed, his pop, his speed to get around the edge and really bend on around the corner on him. Um, I think he didn't do that enough, though. That, that was the main concern. I think that there were several times where he did win his matchup versus Trent Brown. And he chased Mac Jones outside the pocket. The bad part is he chased Mac Jones outside the pocket maybe several times. He only got him to the ground one time. Okay. And uh, it was a good play. But other times where he would beat around the edge, Mac Jones would just escape off of his side and then he'll end up scrambling for, you know, five to ten yards plus. So I don't know if that's really about him losing contain or that's just, you know, Mac Jones pocket presence, whatever, stepping up and getting out of there. All right. But Adafi Owe did have some decent pass rushes, so I can't say it like um, it was all bad because it wasn't. It really wasn't, you know. All right. Uh, now, we know Mac Jones scored a touchdown on the... Uh, uh, near the goal line, scrambling. If y'all watch that play back, Odafe Owe is inches away from getting a sack, maybe even a strip, uh, maybe even a strip sack. He comes around the corner on Trent Brown, nice speed, and as soon as he's about to touch him, Trent Brown takes a nice little push. Mac Jones steps up, escapes right out of there. Okay, 
So I thought that was a positive play. Obviously, it didn't end positive for the Ravens. But I'm talking about the fact that he beat him and he was this close to getting there. Now, if you want to be a big time pass rusher, you gotta finish, right? You can't you don't get awards for almost getting there, but you gotta finish, all right? So I thought that was a positive play. He had a couple plays like that where he almost got the sack. He almost made the play. Now we just need to take those almost and make them into the play. You get what I'm saying? Um so I, I mentioned him being chipped. There was one time in particular where he was chipped and he still ended up beating Trent Brown. But once again, this is one of those times when Matt Jones escaped outside the pocket and um, picked up yardage. The Ravens allowed Matt Jones to scramble far too many times and pick up yardage for a guy who's not known as um, an athletic quarterback. Yeah, he could move a little bit, but he should not have been able to scramble as much as he did. Okay. Um, Oh, Isaiah Wynn, 76, who he had a better time against. He's the one that held Owe on the fourth down. Uh, and Matt Jones ended up coming out to the scramble to the left and completing a short pass. But Owe got a good rush on him. That's why that's why Wynn had to hold him on that kind of play, okay? Uh, so, uh, what, I, what I noticed from him. Now, this is something that it could be a scheme thing. It could be a comfort thing. I'm not sure. But when he puts his hand in the ground and, and gets in that more... A uh, conventional defensive end three-point stance, he's way more explosive going up the field. When he's kind of just, you know, standing on, you know, two-point stance, just kind of waiting for height, he's kind of slow off the ball, all right? When I saw him get down to three-point three point stance, right, hand in the ground, ready to go, he was explosive off the ball. Now, when he did that, he was able to use speed to power, which is something that's really big for a doctor with being the kind of athlete that he is. He was able to Rush outside, get in Trent Brown's chest, put his hand up there into his shoulder pad, and shift him, right? Now, one of, that's, this is one of the plays where he couldn't get the sack, but he was almost there. I wanted to see him do that more, right? When I see him come out two-point stance, it's just kind of, I don't want to say it's lazy because, you know, he's put effort in, but it just doesn't look the same burst out, out of the gate. When he's down on the ground, three-point stance, ready to go, rocking, I, I see that athlete that ran a 4-3 or whatever he ran at his pro day, you know. That's the athlete I see, okay? So, um, let's go to the next one real quick, all right? Uh, the Ravens did a couple of stunts. It was mainly between Owe and Matabike, okay? I think they did it twice. Neither of them worked. Uh, the first one, Owe, uh, <laughs> he was supposed to come around, like, you know, how, how stunt is supposed to work, and he just did it very, very slowly. By the time he did it, the guard was already there. It was ready. It was easily locked up. The second time he did it, he was more decisive. He almost got in there. A great play by that guard ended up blocking Matabike with one arm and Owe with the other arm to prevent a sack. So that was a really nice play by that guard. I don't remember. It's not like 71 or something. Somebody can correct me on that. But a nice play by him. Okay, so I'm not going to say it's a negative, but if you're going to run these stunts, Owe has to be more reactive. He has to be more instinctive. Sometimes... He's a super athlete, but I don't see super athlete when I'm watching him play. And that's kind of the issue. I haven't seen super athlete yet. All right. And a lot of my stuff in here is just about Trent Brown. Trent Brown, big, strong, physical, 6'8", 380 pounds, long arms. Now, the thing that I think Owe was doing that was causing him trouble versus Trent Brown was Trent Brown, like I said, long arms. Okay. So when he's coming out, uh, coming out of his stance, he, he allowed too many times for Trent Brown to get his arm into his shoulder pads first. Now, once Trent Brown got his arm on Dr. Owen's shoulder pad, the, the, the rep is dead, pretty much. All right. He, he, can, he can get, he can shield him wherever he wants to go. It's pretty much it. He's so strong. His arms are so long. He's so powerful. That was it. The times where Odafi was able to strike first, get his hands in there, and really uh, control where he wanted to go, that's when he had more success. All right. So... If I had to say for Dafe Owe was, obviously you got to know who you're going against. And when Trent Browns aren't on every team, you know, the guys that are this size, that strength, they're not on every team. But I think that way too many times he let Trent Brown win the hands matchup in terms of who got the strike first. And that's big in O-line, D-line competition. Who gets to put their hands on somebody first? That's usually who wins the battle, okay? Um, so what I would say is... Um, now, the Mac Jones escape in the pocket thing I have in the positive is also happening in the negative just because I don't know if always all supposed to be keeping contained on these plays. 
I'm not going to say like, I, hey, I'm not an all-22 guru. I'm not pretending to be. You know, we have a lot of guys in the Ravens community that are really, really good at that. Uh, so I'm just kind of watching it, giving my observations on it. Uh, I'm not sure if he rushed upfield too much sometimes, allowing escape lanes. And he has to be a little bit better at that. Or that's just, just a part of the scheme he's doing what he's supposed to do. So I'm, I don't really know 100%. But a lot of times, Mac Jones was escaping off of wherever Adafi Oway was lined up. It, that, this could just be coincidence. Uh, it could be, you know, he's like I said, he's rushing the field too much. I don't know. I'm just going off of what I saw, okay? Now, my main things that I got away, I got away from watching Adafi Oway and should the Ravens fans be concerned. It's kind of mixed reviews, all right? He's a young player. He's still a really inexperienced guy. I mean, I think he started playing football seriously, like as a sophomore or a junior in high school. Um, so what I would say is this. He needs to have a plan when he pass for Sometimes it just looks like, hey, look, I'm a good athlete. I'm going I'm to get there and I'm going to do what I do and figure it out. Um, I think sometimes he's too predictable. He First Trent Brown, he wanted to go up the field a lot. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes he's able to use great bend because he's a tremendous athlete and get around the corner. But a lot of times when he found success was when he sped up, he sped, you know, outside rush, then power back to the inside. Kind of like how we see it, uh, my, the same move Michael Parsons is doing for, for the Cowboys, right? You know, they both went to Penn State. That's the only reason I'm kind of even making that kind of comparison. But when he mixed it up and actually went inside sometimes, it caught Trent Brown by surprise. He actually ended up winning some of those matchups. I mean, there were times where he did that move. You know, went outside, came back inside. He got a pressure on Mac Jones. Mac Jones has to throw a ball short uh, to the running back, and it's incomplete because he can't step into the throw because Odafi always pressures in his face, right? So that's why I say it's mixed reviews, all right? And what I want to say is for Odafi Owe, from what I've seen, I want to see him with his hand in the ground. Now, I mentioned that already, but, you know, coming to the end of the video, what I want to say is that when he has his hand in the ground, he is way, way more explosive. When he's just standing up two-point stands, I'm not seeing the best out of him. But when his hand's in the ground, I'm seeing him get around that corner. I'm seeing bend. I'm seeing power. I'm seeing explosion. But two-point stands, it just doesn't fit him. I don't know. Uh, this is a mental thing. I don't know what it is. But when he's down, hand in the dirt, I like what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a guy that has the potential to get sacks. Uh, but the guy that's standing up, I'm not seeing it from that same kind of guy, okay? And lastly, what I would have to say is, as a pass rusher, you need your main move and you need a counter move. Adafi Owe know he has the speed, right? He know he has a little bit of power. He has no counter move. There were plenty of times where Trent Brown just had to sit back and pretty much catch Adafi Owe. If he got his hands on him, it was done. It was a wrap. There was no counter move in sight. It was nothing that he could do. All right. Um, so if I say I had to say anything for Adafi Owe is that he needs a counter move. But look, it's his second year. So that's why I say it's a mixed review. I thought it was encouraging from what I saw. I thought I saw a guy that when when using his when using his capabilities correctly is still an explosive guy. It's still a guy that has a lot of potential, but he needs to hone his craft a little bit more. He needs to have listen, when you're a pass rusher, you don't need to have five, seven moves. You just need to have two. You need to have a you need to have your go-to move, you need to have your counter move when the when the old line sees that coming, all right? That's what made a guy like Dwight Freeney back in the day so successful. He had his move. He didn't need to count into that. He had his spin move, the legendary spin move. You know what I'm saying? So, Adafi Owe, if he could figure that out, we'll see a lot more from him. Um, so, when I watched him versus the Patriots, I saw a guy that went against an experienced left tackle, a big left tackle, and just sometimes he won with office athleticism. Sometimes he didn't, and that was the case. If he could just be a guy that can find that happy medium of mixing up his pass rush moves, going inside, going outside, and not getting complacent, he could be a really special talent. All right, that's what I got from it. We're only three weeks in. We'll see what happens. I know this video is a little bit more, um, I guess, technical than I usually do my videos. So hopefully you guys stay through and watch the whole thing, man. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, just on the fan TV. I'm out.